what's going on guys so uh sorry things have not really been up to date here on the channel and just uh social media in general and that is because um you know we're behind so we don't we don't really have time to uh produce and make videos like every week so we're trying to do it like um you know at least every two weeks so you know that's kind of put us behind and uh if you follow on social media you'll know that uh, you'll you'll see like a YouTube video of something that happened in the past and then you'll see something uh, a little bit You know more current on social media Instagram, whatever it is And that can be a little confusing. It's just kind of we're just kind of uploading what we have. It's not really uh, saying that You know, this is what the Jeep currently looks like at this date of time. So just wanted to explain that for a little bit um, So this here we are December Getting close to Christmas, a couple weeks away from Christmas here. And uh, a little sick right now, so you guys um, bear with me a little bit. But um, after work here one night, and we are about to work on the Jeep, uh, do a little bit of engine work because we are starting to leak a little bit of oil. And that is actually caused by the oil filter housing and that's a really common issue with 3.6 uh don't really think um 3.8 really has any issues like that leaking oil i know they burn oil but 3.6 they they all pretty much leak uh you know from the back of the top of the engine and down onto the exhaust and that's why or that's what i've been told why a lot of them end up burning to the ground in flames i'm gonna go ahead and knock this out uh took off work for tomorrow so can make sure I have the weekend to uh, take care of it because it's a serious issue and we did go to the dealership to buy a Mopar OEM part so we want to make sure that it's done right and it's gonna be uh, solid you know almost at a hundred thousand miles so it's really honestly not that bad so I mean just doing stuff like this every now and then that's acceptable you know it's it's expected so Doing stuff like this, um, you know, it's just gotta be done and it's just gonna happen on any other 3.6. So, you know, talking to the guys at the dealership, they were saying that, uh, you know, they're they're selling them like hotcakes right now just because uh, they're, so many of the 3.6s are getting older and it's just a common issue with the heating and cooling, um, the separator, like separation from the cooling uh, block on the oil sending or the oil, filter housing unit they kind of like expand and collapse or contract whatever so it causes a little bit of uh, separation on the gaskets there and it causes the oil to leak so it'll kind of puddle up um, in between the uh, cylinders there on the underneath the intake so I'm gonna do a time lapse and show you guys what that looks like here in a second I'm gonna show you guys here it's a pretty big box and this was not cheap I uh, didn't really want to cheap out and order one because one guy had actually bought an aftermarket one and eight months later it started leaking again. So uh, just, you know, for all that work you gotta do, just do it right. And it's engine parts. So really wanna make sure that those are gonna be where they need to be. I don't really know what all that means, shipping stuff, I guess, but all that part number, I guess, that's really all you can really get from that, but pretty big box there. And uh, I'm gonna crack it open, see what we got. And guys, uh, so the reason why things seem more frequently uh, changing on like social media and stuff like that is because it's being older uh, content being posted. So, you know, we're not always, uh, posting or filming behind the scenes stuff so you know when we do film it's usually on the weekends or not for several months things aren't really changing that frequently but when they do uh it's just because of deals and stuff that just kind of pop up and we just kind of happen to take so i mean and we're also really trying to stay uh productive and really creative with it all so you know we're always thinking about it how we can make it better you know with what we have so we're always trying to think about what setup would look good. Uh, you know, if this would look better than that, would this look better? And also just trying stuff. So, you know, if we have the option and just kind of 
just really trying to stay thinking out of the box and stuff like that. So that's that's pretty much the main reason, uh, you know, behind this build uh, if you want to call it that whatever you know some people don't but whatever but yeah that is the reason why you know things appear to change more often and you know you'll notice that we will stick with whatever we feel like is most solid and what ma makes us more happy with you know even longer until you know we can find something better or whatever whatever works best and uh you know for right now uh you know we've been with this current setup with the raw ATX slabs, Pro Comp 40s. Uh, we've been with this setup for probably a few months now and kind of plan on keeping it that way. And uh, just, you know, doing stuff like axles and more performance and uh, stuff like that, make it more solid. So looking at this is really nice being OEM, you know, having the bolts already in there and they don't come out cause they, you know, I got restrictions right there. So that's nice. That's awesome. Uh, really taking a look here at that O-ring gasket, that O-ring gasket, that one and that one, and then also that O-ring. So making sure that everything is gonna be uh, pretty much seated the way that it's gonna, you know, supposed to be. And then also that one, but, uh, I guess that's gonna be for a rubber hose right there. But these sensors are already in, which is nice. And they're already torqued down to what they need to be. So these will not be leaking uh, due to error of installation. So that is awesome. And there should already be a filter in here. <laughs> Better be a filter in there for how much this thing costs. But you guys know what I'm saying. There's the unit right there. And that's what we are about to replace. And it's gonna be interesting. So, you know, we gotta take off the top intake the bottom intake, uh, make sure all those intake gaskets are nice and clean. And we did replace those uh, last time we did this oil pressure switch right here. So those are perfect. We don't have to worry about those being brittle, but normally they, uh, they do get brittle. So we should be good there. And other than that, I mean, it should be pretty straightforward. And then obviously disconnecting the fuel rail, that'll be interesting. Hopefully we won't make a gas, a little gas spill mess and have to breathe in some gas. So anyways. guys so about an hour hour and a half maybe two hours into this uh got everything off got it down to the block you know on the intake of course so nothing too crazy Just getting the top and bottom intake off the make sure you guys are pulling the uh let's see fuel pump uh fuse there and then kind of running it out of gas while you can so that way when you pull the um uh, uh which i'm it's so t i'm so tired my mind's going blank here um the fuel line off of the fuel rail there uh, doesn't spew gas out. So just a little tip there for you guys. So I uh, got the bottom and take off right here. Looking good. Um, you know, as I told you guys, did replace all these intake gaskets, uh, all 12. And uh, these are kind of wanting to pop out a little bit, these top three. I guess they kind of expanded a little bit, stretched for some reason, even though they're not even like six months old. So there's that. Uh, I might 
freeze them or something or put them in the fridge or something, make them colder so they'll stay in. So they'll, you know, hold shape until they get pressed again uh, on, upon installation. But yeah, got that off and really just used um, eight millimeter, 10 millimeter, uh, a couple, you know, wire strippers, um, some extensions. I uh, did not need the Torx. That was actually for the fuel rails. Didn't actually take those off. Um, yeah, some, a lot of 10 millimeters and good stuff like that. Um, tried to really pull the wires back and see I got all that tie back real nice and uh, tried to get the most bang for my buck there. And uh, now that we got that out of the way, you guys can see uh, throttle body down there. It's random stuff everywhere right now, but uh, we're down. We are down to the... What's up guys? So this is gonna be the driver side. Uh, just gonna show you guys real quick, a little update that I am replacing the wheel hub assembly unit bearing uh, deal here. So this is Spicer. So that's gonna be, you know, the OEM brand. So, you know, when you hear Spicer, Ultimate, Dana 44, Spicer, Dana 60s, you know, that's all the same stuff. So it's like the manufacturer or whatever, it's this, this is like OEM. So, um, this is Spicer, it was about a hundred bucks and it's a pretty good deal considering the uh, Mopar one was like almost 200, I think somebody said. That could have just been where they got it from, but uh, really not sure the deal on that there because I mean, it's to my knowledge, it's like the same thing. So anyways, the box and the packaging, it was not good. It was just like in a thin little box. So, you know, these are pretty heavy, um, don't really, can't really compare it to like a size of weight, but probably like uh, 10 pounds or so, maybe more. So, you know, obviously getting thrown around during shipping, this sensor can be broken off or crimped or, you know, something like that, smashed or ripped or anything weird like that. But surprisingly, it was still on the box. The box was pretty much uh, ripped open by the time it arrived at my house. So it's, um, still intact obviously you can't really hurt this unless you you know throw it down a skyscraper but it's uh you know still there's no play or anything funny there's no marks there's no dings dents cracks or anything weird out of the ordinary so i think we're good there but it was covered in dust from all of the cardboard being uh shaved and grounded all over the place so uh, anyways got it cleaned up for the most part looks good you know just a factory dana 30 dana 44 yes they are the same um hub unit bearing assembly here so got the new abs sensor that's awesome that's gonna help us out a lot hopefully that'll get our uh abs working good there so about to pop this tire off may do a rotate while i'm in here and uh get this swapped out because as you guys know we did swap out the uh passenger side one uh, with an OEM one from another axle and that one's pretty much brand new so we're gonna have two new unit bearings up here rolling nice and smooth and uh, no play whatsoever and that'll be rolling probably for I don't know about 100k miles probably less than that because you know these have lasted about 100k so a little bit more offset here so probably probably less for sure uh, not gonna be as much mud as the previous owner did so it might last about that long so either way we'll be good for a while so uh you know this is what we have to do on an aftermarket dana 44 either way so you know having this thing fully trussed and gusted it with ball joints it's housing's plenty strong for the street and what we use it for so it's uh main sole purpose is to get us to work and back every day so that's really our main concern right now so we're not really uh too worried about having the bigger differential in the front and axle shafts uh, you know, that would be the pros and cons of having, uh, you know, the, the built 30 and then the aftermarket 44 uh, or Rubicon 44. Um, yeah, so, you know, we got 
all that suited out and uh, ready to go. So, you know, eventually not spend the money right now since we already have all this pretty much done, uh, save for one tons in the future. So, um, you know, I don't want to spend any more money on factory axles or 44s or anything like that. So. All right, so here is the new wheel bearing. It is on, I uh, got it off. Got the old one off pretty easily, just pounded it right off. So that was, uh, you know, quick and easy. Didn't have to use any penetrating oil or WD-40, anything weird like that. So uh, I got the brake assembly off as one, just with those two large 18 millimeter bolts. Didn't have to take off the caliper from the bracket itself, so that's nice. Um, that worked out good. Got the uh, the new one seated on really well. I got the new sensor there. That looks great. Got that ran with the uh, brake dust shield uh, placed properly, so all that's lined up. Got these bolts torqued to uh, 75 foot pounds, so that's what it called for on mine. You know, around there, I probably went about 80 foot pounds or something like that, so it's uh, around that neighborhood. It's probably good, but uh, about to throw this axle nut on and torque that down to. Uh, I think 100 is what that calls for so get that on there and apparently you don't want that too tight um, Or too loose obviously, but uh, you know the preload on the bearing It'll probably wear it out over time quicker. I guess if you don't torque this axle nuts right here properly, so gonna make sure that's done and Run this new ABS line back up to the frame get that back connected Should be good to go ready to roll What's up guys, it's been a second since we've uh, had the Jeep off-road. The big brakes are in, those are doing great, and these are doing awesome. Uh, let's see, I had to bleed them a few more times, so that helped a lot, but uh, as you can see, doing pretty good there. Everything's looking nice. Got a little bit of pop in the steering box, I think, so probably gonna have to look at a new hydro assist, but not right now. You know, being fully trust gusseted, ball joints, all that stuff. Um, you know, I need to do upgraded steering here soon. Got the energy tie rod, but need to uh, get the flip drag too. So I might just do a whole new kit, like a, uh, probably like a rock crawler, full kit or something like that. That would be nice, something nice, beefy and fresh, and that'll help a lot. Uh, you know, just with all the stability on road and just overall safety. So yeah, just uh, got it out here on the trail real quick and just thought I'd show you guys a little update. Doing pretty good. 